Introduction of Energy Band Theory Understanding the band theory In chemical physics, we know that matter keeps converting its state and gives rise to various different properties that we see around us. This story of matter is completely governed by the energies that keep stabilizing and destabilizing the matter and depends quite a lot on the surroundings. When atoms come together to form a compound, their atomic orbital energies mix together to form molecular orbital energies. The electronic band structure of a matter describes the range of energies that an electron within the matter may have and ranges of energy that it may not have. Now, let's take a dip into the band theory to understand it further. The electrons of a single isolated atom occupy atomic orbitals. Each orbital forms a discrete energy level. When multiple atoms join together to form into a molecule, their atomic orbitals combine to form molecular orbitals, each of which forms at a discrete energy level. As more atoms are brought together, the molecular orbitals extend larger and larger and the energy levels of the molecule will become increasingly dense. Eventually, the collection of atoms form a giant molecule or in other words, a solid. Types of energy bands Let's take a look at various types of energy bands. The first one is valence band. It is the band of energy where all the valence electrons reside and are involved in the highest energy molecular orbital. And the second one is conduction band. It is a delocalized band of energy levels in a crystalline solid which is partly filled with electrons. These have some great mobility and are responsible for electrical conductivity. Fermi level energy. This level refers to the highest occupied molecular orbital at absolute zero. It is usually found at the center between the valence and conduction bands. The particles in that state have their own quantum states and generally do not interact with each other. When the temperature begins to rise above absolute zero, these particles will start moving upwards and the states below the Fermi level becomes unoccupied. It's pretty much the same thing which you might have inferred, but let me reiterate here for you. In metals, the Fermi energy gives us information about the velocities of the electrons which participate in the ordinary electrical conduction. The amount of energy which can be given to an electron in such conduction processes is in order of micro electron volts. Energy band gap. Take a look at the energy band gap. The band indicates whether the substance is a conductor, semiconductor or an insulator. A very large band gap like this purely indicates that the substance is an insulator. It is because it takes a huge amount of energy for the electrons to jump from the valence band to the conduction band. Hence, there will be no conductivity. When there is no gap or a small band gap like this, then it's an indication that the substance is a conductor. Small band gap essentially allows for a constant conductivity. And lastly, when there is a small band gap like this as shown here, it just means that the conductivity in this case is somewhere between that of an insulator and a conductor. Hence, this kind of a substance is known as semiconductor. Recap. In this lesson, we learnt about band theory, types and importance of energy bands, Fermi level energy, band gap, and the relationship between the band gap and the properties of a conductor.